This is going to be video two of a uh, do-it-yourself uh, vehicle maintenance. I'm going to cover tools and I'll even throw in some free information on how to replace a head gasket as well as an intake gasket with some information on the uh, Dodge 360. So the Dodge 360 and the Dodge 318 are basically the same motors. Um, the biggest difference is uh, when swapping out a 318 and a 360 is the electronics and the weights. Um, you have a variation between a transmission weight and a flex plate weight as well as a counterweight that is on the crankshaft. So with the 318 and the 360, your counterweights for your flywheel and your crankshaft are all going to be uh, different. So I'm not going to go into details with that uh, unless uh, somebody arises a question and I will direct them uh, to either the proper video or the person showing them how to accomplish this task. But um, grab yourself some coffee and um, I hope you can stay awake for this because this is going to be a bit of a long video. And I'm going to try to be as simple to explain all of this information as possible. Um, I am a master mechanic. I have never taken my vehicles to someone to fix my vehicles. Um, when I was a small child between the ages of 6 and 8 years old, my father set me on top of a Ford 360. And I removed my first alternator. Um, I was such a small child that whenever I pulled the bolt out, I couldn't hold the alternator up. It, it literally took everything that I had to hold that alternator up. But that's some of my first memories. Um, sometimes you got to do what you got to do, you know. Uh, you can't afford to um, sit on the side of the road. Uh, you can't afford to pay somebody to pick up your vehicle and tow it off. Um, you can't afford to spend $4,000, $5,000 on parts and a mechanic. Um, or if you're in the situation to where you have a thousand dollars but you don't have a thousand dollars to pay the mechanic but you have a thousand dollars to fix the parts I can honestly tell you this uh, rebuilding a transmission most of your uh, 90s 80s and 2000 vehicles if you rebuild it yourself you're gonna cut the cost of remanufactured if you go out and you buy a case for a transmission Depending on the type of transmission, I have two vehicles on the property here, $300 to $200 for the case. Rebuild kits, high performance rebuild kits, six, $700, $400. Your basic OEM rebuild kits, master rebuild kits, and overhaul, master overhaul kits will run anywhere between $150, $175 to $200. Now with a little bit of know-how, you can completely rebuild your transmission on the side of the road or in your vehicle for under four hundred dollars that's not including tools that's just parts now if you look at remanufactured vehicle parts uh, anywhere between a thousand two thousand and three thousand dollars for rebuilt motors transmissions if you put four hundred dollars into something and say that I built that myself on the side of the road with a pair of two by fours and some tools and a little bit of knowledge you deserve a pat on the back because there's not a lot of people out there nowadays that can do this um, I've acquired these skills because they were taught to me. Um, like I said before, I've never paid someone to fix my vehicles. I uh, will be turning 40 years old this December, and I've been working on vehicles as far back as I can remember, even before I was strong enough to pick up an alternator. So, with this being said, I'm going to take you in the back of my step van back here and I'm going to show you some basic tools and then in the next video I'm going to show you some extended tools on doing it yourself. Now with this being said my apologies to any and every mechanic that's out there that's out there trying to make money off of everybody but like I said 
not everybody can afford to pay a mechanic a thousand dollars to fix their vehicles and with mechanics prices these days a lot of people are driving their vehicles until something goes wrong and then they're taking them to the used car dealership and then other people go pick them up somebody pays four thousand dollars for a vehicle at a loose used car dealership six months later they're spending four or five thousand dollars more to get it back on the road these are working class people this is a very sad thing that we see these days if you purchase a vehicle for three thousand two thousand dollars you may be in the clear but when you get down in the thousand two thousand dollar range there's gonna be a problem with it there are some people that go out and spend six and ten thousand dollars on used vehicles a year later they're putting four and five thousand dollars into the transmissions let's stop this cycle let's go back to when people could do things on their own it's 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 an interesting thing because when we were all kids in my generation everybody got together to help fix everybody's vehicles it wasn't because of the fact that most people couldn't afford it it's because the people weren't going to put that much money into things and nowadays it's getting stupid three dollars for a loaf of bread when i was a kid <laughs> when i was a kid i remember putting 15 cents into a soda machine and getting a bottle of soda. And that wasn't that long ago. Nowadays, a bottle of soda, a dollar seventy-five. So, I'm gonna go into this video and uh, please ask questions. If there's something you don't understand, I would be more than happy to explain it to you. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is gloves. A good pair of gloves is going to save your knuckles and it's going to save your hands. But unfortunately, some of us can't thread bolts and we can't feel what we need to feel with, with gloves on. But as you can see my hands, they're not in the greatest of shape. These, these hands have been worked. These hands, these hands hurt, and these hands are stiff. And by most part, because of the information that I'm about to give you, this is the reason why my hands are the way they are. But a good pair of gloves, you don't have to be this name brand, but they'll save you on busting your knuckles. So if you're about to break something loose, grab you some gloves, or if it's cold outside. But I hope you brought your coffee with you. So we're going to walk on back here. And I'm going to be doing this with one hand, and I'm talking kind of slow, and I'm going to try to uh, simplify as much as possible. This is a Dodge repair manual from Haynes. Uh, nowadays we have digital copies of this that you can access through your cell phone, through your tablet. You can take your tablet with you and do a DIY step-by-step -step and go through this repair manual. This manual will tell you everything that you need to know, including torque specs, on how to do everything on your vehicle, except for blueprinting. Vehicle maintenance, breakdown, teardown, as well as there are wiring schematics, electrical schematics, everything that you need to know for a 1994 through a 2001 full-size model, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, V6 to V10, gasoline and diesel engines. This includes the drivetrain of the vans. But like I said, you can get the paper copy, or you can get the digital copy, or you can get a disc to throw in your, your drive. This right here will save you thousands and let me repeat myself. This will save you thousands of dollars in common sense repairs. You're going to need some tools. Yeah, Walmart. 
It doesn't have to be Snap-on. It doesn't have to be Mac. It doesn't have to be an expensive tool set. But when you start breaking bolts loose, sometimes you'll break a tool. Go buy another one. A $3 tool versus a $80 mechanic. You're going to need something like this. Channel lock, slotted, pliers. You're going to need some wire. If, say, for instance, your U-joint breaks, you can reattach a U-joint. CV joint, you can take that, wrap it around it, attach it somewhere to where it holds onto it so you can move the vehicle off the side of the road. Your exhaust hits the ground. You can wire your exhaust up, move your vehicle, get you to point A to point B. Some people could even use duct tape. But if you've got a hot exhaust, that wire is going to be the best thing. A torch. If you need a torch for something, shrink wrap, heat tube, a lock, anything with common sense. If you have a line that's frozen, that's not a fuel line, torch is going to help you. Something electric versus something gas, use common sense. If it's an explosive, you don't necessarily want to be using that on a fuel line. If your fuel filter is frozen because there's water in it or something, and you're getting pressure to one side but you're not getting pressure through the other side, I wouldn't use a torch <laughs> at all. A good hammer. Something you can beat on things with because you might need to get a bolt out. And sometimes the bolts, like on leaf springs, can be a bitch. A pipe wrench. Monkey wrench, pipe wrench. This comes in handy with things like ball hitches, all kinds of things like that. A good screwdriver with some length on it. Now you're going to need one screwdriver, which is going to be an old one or a good one. You're going to need to use something to pry with. You can beat on it. I actually have something old here versus something new. Don't tear up your new stuff, but the end of this isn't going to work all well with that. This, on the other hand, will. A headlamp comes in very handy. When you're underneath the vehicle, or if you're outside the vehicle, sometimes it's always a good idea to have a headlamp. I also carry a 12 volt light. If you have a generator or you have AC, you can get a drop lamp. Or there's been instances to where I actually took one of these lights and hung it up underneath the hood of my vehicle and use one of those lights. <laughs> an extension cord. If you have an RV step van or something like that, you got to run power tools, it's always good to have an extension cord. A file for clearance or deburring things. Uh, say for instance you have to fabricate something, you got to cut it, that file works great. A set of drill bits. Something to measure with. I've got some pliers. I've got some short screwdrivers. Of course, I have a bent screwdriver for prying. I've got some nuts and bolts over here. I've got liquid tape. I've got a battery terminal cleaner. This right here, you can put your tools in it, carry it with you, or put your parts in it. Extra parts. Some extra hoses, hard lines, things of that nature. Stuff you might need in case your vehicle breaks down. I have the ammo can here for my loose tools. This is always handy. Now with most of your vehicles, you need some Torx bits or some T's. Stars, 8 points, 12 points. You need two different sets. Most of your brakes and your brakes are going to have these. You need some uh, male and female sets. Center punches, 
crescent wrenches, adjustable wrenches. Two of the most important things are going to be vice grips. Make sure you got a good two sets of vice grips. You need one with the rounded jaws and one set with the flat jaws. You need center punches and you need things like this. Longer sockets, you're going to run into that. And you're going to need a set of wrenches. These are quick wrenches, ratcheting quick wrenches. Most of all your tools you can find at Walmart. I've actually used Walmart tools quite a bit in my life. Sometimes they break, sometimes they don't. A rubber mallet for when you need to remove something and you don't want to bend up, you don't want to bend it, and you don't want to tear it up. A bag with things like zip ties, a self bleeder kit. Most importantly, you got to keep your hands clean and other things clean. So simple shop towels. Uh, sometimes you can take those to the laundromat and they've got a dirty thing. You can wash them in the uh, the mechanics <laughs> washer or they may have some extra service or something like that to where you can wash them rags out. Those are reusable. Or you can just get the grease rags. Now this is just your basic set tool sets. This isn't extensive this is what you're going to need in order to fix things i actually purchased a kit and i add things to this and i have added extra things to this so this is my electrical box an assortment of fuses and breakers if you have them check out see what your vehicle's got make sure you have things like this on hand with the right amps. This is a fuse tester. You don't necessarily have to have this, but this does come in handy. Blade connectors, circular connectors, hog connectors, butt connectors, male and female connectors, and some shrink tubing, as well as some electrical tape. That's a must-have, and that's part of the rest of what I have in the back. mud dauber's nest. This is a Duralast tool set. Okay. Now this is a specialty tool set because of the fact that you see all those fixed points on there. Okay we have 12 point, we have 36 point bolts. That's a bit of a specialty set. Now your basic SEA and your metric, standard American, and your metric tool set. I believe I paid $60 for this. This is something that goes behind the seat. This is something I take with me. This is portable. It's inexpensive. If things get lost, things can be replaced. This is cheap, but this is something I can grab and go with. Okay. This comes with three sets of wrenches, comes with majority of all of your sockets, with the few exceptions to where I've had to get some 21, 22, some larger metric deep wells for that. Depending on the vehicle that you're working with, your maintenance book will tell you what tools that you need to take apart whatever it is you need to take apart. So there will be a list of what sockets you need Sometimes you'll get a set and there won't be a 16 in there deep well or there won't be a 15 deep well. Sometimes you'll have to go get extras. So what you do is you get those extras. So you saw a couple of them in that ammo can. Here's the rest of them. These are all deep wells. Okay. One thing that I did find 19, 18s, 15s, and 16s are sometimes omitted from those sets. This is yet again another Stanley tool set, and these are wrenches. Okay, not only with the sockets, you're going to need some wrenches. Of course, it's in a nice little handy carrier. Now I'm going to dig into what I have on my ammo can here, and I'm going to do it rather quickly, and I'm going to make a bunch of noise here, so bear with me.
Now, those are the additions of the torque sizes. That book will tell you what you need. Be careful with these because of the fact that some of these are really cheap and you can actually twist and bend these and tear these up. Because if you look at the condition of some of these, they're not exactly in the greatest condition. But you will need specialty tools. Now, a set of crescent wrenches. A set of vice grips. Uh, they always come in handy for holding things. If you need to be on one side and another side, you can always clamp something down, like for instance those nuts right there. Right there. I actually put vice grips on them and caught it on something like that other bolt over there. Like that other bolt right there. So I could work outside and to remove those. A good set of screwdrivers and some extensions. Okay, you can always put extensions together, but you always need to remember when you're trying to break something loose, the shorter the extension or no extension at all is always the best policy. Now I've got some quick wrenches here to help things out, some speed wrenches. Those are self-explanatory. Sometimes two or three sizes are needed. A center punch is always helpful for getting things out of areas. You can get a cheap set. Or you can use them for a center punch for setting screws or setting nails or breaking things loose, removing things. These, these actually come in very handy. If you've got a drill that's walking, center punch it. Of course, the, the rest of these, a good pair of pliers. Now, this is a specialty tool right here. This right here is an oil sensor socket or an oil pressure socket for a Dodge 318. A good set of wire brushes to clean things off. Electric tape. A razor blade for cutting things, and the other part of the punch set. Now down here, this goes to different sizes, so this takes one size, expands it out to another size. 20 degrees or swivels, these always come in handy for some of those hard to reach areas. Usually you can pick up a set of them, if you have to break something loose with these, um, don't be surprised if they break. I have literally broken every single set that I've ever bought. They usually don't last more than five or six years. Extra sockets in the size that you need. I'm not sure if we'll be able to pick this up, but these are Duralast. That's a 22. This is a 23. This is a 20. And this is an old spark plug wrench, uh, or a spark plug socket. I use this in order to remove universal joint caps. Okay, you put that down in there, you hit this side, that's what that big hammer right there is for. Now, there's some other specialty tools that you need, are little O-ring picks, as well as a pipe cutter. Now, in instances where you have hard to get to things, you need hardened, larger sized, hardened with a smaller diameter sockets for areas like brake components, things that are rusted. A good tool like a punch or something of this nature where you can beat on one end of it and the other end's flat. as well extensions. You can never have too many extensions. All right, the other side. A wet dry shop vac always comes in handy so you can clean things off your motor components, clean your motor components without getting them wet. That way you can see where leaks are, 
or whenever you do things like removing heads, you can pull the water out of the cylinder without having to take a bunch of rags and getting a bunch of rags wet. You can just take the vacuum cleaner and suck it all out. Most RVs, components, things like that have DC systems or you can get an inverter, a small little inverter box, pack it with you, carry it with you, that way you can plug it into your battery and you can do it that way. Of course, we've already carried, covered the gloves, we've already covered the headlamp, cutting tools, make sure you have something, that way you can fabricate, remove, cut off, nip ears, things like that, cleaning tools, wire brushes, angle grinders, and drills. I'm not going to get into that. I have a brass brush and I have a steel brush. Okay, Some metals are a bit softer. Safety is always a dust mask or particulate and glasses. Uh, you don't want metal fragments getting into your eyes. I've actually had a lot of people walking around with little red spots in their eyes because they've got a piece of wire from one of these stuck in their eyeball and uh, they won't go to the doctor and have it removed because it's too expensive. So, yes. Something for cleaning around areas. Small scrub brushes, detailed brushes, large brushes. Something like a wood chisel, something to get up underneath something, to break something loose, to cut something, to nibble something off. This right here is an ohms meter. Okay, this tells you a lot of information, like for instance, if you're having problems with your transmission, you have electric servos and things like that, solenoids. In order for you to tell if they're working properly, this is how you do it. So you pull the plug off the transmission, you take your you take your leads right here, you touch what wires you need to touch through the manual, that will explain everything like that through the maintenance manual, and the rebuild manual, you take that, you touch it, you see if there's connectivity, and that'll tell you if those are working or not. You don't even have to take the transmission apart to discover that. This is a light tester, it's very simple, it's not very complicated. You take one end of it, you connect it to the ground, you take this right here, you touch it to the positive, the light look lights up to let you know you've got power going to it. Wire strippers, there's two different types of wire strippers. We have heat shrink tubing in various sizes. We have RV sealant, gasket sealant. I like the blue. This is multi-purpose. This is a big thing right here. This makes a lot of sense. This is called a soldering tool but this is a portable butane soldering tool. So you gotta be careful about where you use this at, but this is portable. I don't have to run wires around. This thing heats up pretty quick. I can do heat shrink, boom. I can solder in things, do whatever I need to do with it. I've got flux, I have pipe solder, and then I have regular automotive solder. I don't use this. I will do a video on how to use all this and why I have this. I will explain that at a later date when I solder all those wires up. Fluids. Make sure you have brake fluid. Make sure you have transmission fluid. Make sure you have a quart of oil. A quart of all three is always going to be best just to make sure you have it on hand. Make sure it's sealed in a box, in a bag, in a milk crate. Make sure you have at least two different funnels. A short funnel and a long funnel depending on the type of vehicle that you're using and what you're running. Don't get caught without things like that. So if you're running down the road and all of a sudden you, you spring a leak but then you drop something in there or you're able to get to the hose and you're like two quarts low or you're a quart low, that could mean that you damage your engine or if you don't damage your engine. You're driving down the road, you spring a leak, um, all your brake fluid goes on the ground and you find out it's just a line, you're able to cut some high pressure hose, put some high pressure hose on there, put some uh, Skip my brain right now. Hose clamp, put some hose clamps on it. Uh, right here, I actually have some O rings, an O ring kit, depending on if you need that or not. But you can do fixes and you can fix hoses and lines, but make sure you have the fluid. Call from 636456. Six. Sorry about that. Make sure you always have the fluid available as well as the funnels. So I hope I covered everything. A wooden block 
as well as a jack, but I'll get into that here in a little bit. But make sure you have the tools that you need in order to do what it is you need. Throughout the years, I've picked up little by little. Go to swap meets, go to yard sales, go to thrift shops. Um, one, one suggestion I can give you that is good advice. Some people may say it's bad advice, but pawn shops are excellent places for picking up cheap tools. But always be mindful that just because the outer case says snap-on doesn't mean that's what's on the inside. Look them over. Use your head. Get you a good set of tools. Make sure you got some rags. The type of cleaner that I use is simple green and a spray bottle. I've got a bag with some extra parts in it. I've got a magnetic tool tray right there. Uh, they always come in handy for keeping things in place so you don't lose nuts and bolts. This is going to be part two of my vehicle maintenance DIY. Don't pay a thousand, two thousand dollars for a mechanic for something you can do on your own. I understand a lot of people think it's it's so complicated, but yet once you watch a YouTube video of somebody tear something down and put it back together, it's so simple. Even if you have to look up YouTube videos, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there that will take you step by step and physically show you how to do things. They'll tell you what size sockets you need to use. Like, for instance, there's an individual that, that has a website, or a, excuse me, a YouTube channel called Transmission Bench. He tears down and rebuilds transmissions to show, and he shows everybody the steps and as well as the tools on how to rebuild your own transmission. He even shows you how to make a transmission stand in order to do that. I mean, like, for instance, if you have some some 2x4s in the back of your step van and you have to pull your transmission. Basically, you don't really have to take the transmission out of the step van. You pull this plate out, you push the transmission back, you stand the front of the transmission up, and then you put 2x4s on the side here, you make a frame, and of course you have to have a cherry picker or something like that, and then you set that frame right here and then you set your transmission down on top of that frame, you can rebuild your transmission in a step van right here where that heater's at. You can rebuild your motor right where it sits. You don't have to take it out. That's, that's the amazing thing about being able to do things on your own is a lot of times you don't need a garage to do things. And I've literally seen people rebuild their engines on the side of the road. But you got to be careful with some of those laws. Some states don't like that. But I've got some tips and tricks on uh, some other things here in video 3 that's going to explain and show you how to keep your workspace clean. So if you're in the desert or if you're in National Forest, when you do something like vehicle maintenance or if you have to rebuild your transmission or if you have to change your differential oil, you don't leave a big nasty stain and they don't find you. So this is Mr. Chamberlain, or Russ Chamberlain here, and I hope I covered it all. If I left anything out, please comment, uh, of course, like, subscribe, and have a great day.